Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. Back in 1989, the Iron Curtain fell. And for young people, the Iron Curtain was that for 70 years, Russia was under atheistic communism. And then in the 1940s, after World War II, Russia took over Eastern Europe. And for decades, Christianity was persecuted. Christians went to jail for their faith. Finally, in 1989, the curtain fell. Christians could go into Russia and share the gospel. In 1991, some Lutheran pastors and I went into the Moscow public schools. We were invited to preach the gospel and to hand out free Bibles. You can't do that in America. And I can remember handing out the Bible to all these teenagers, and this Russian school teacher comes up afterwards, can I have one? And I gave her a Bible and she just took it like, oh, like it was precious. Well, that was way back in 1991, and, and many people came to Christ after the wall fell. My question is, what's happening today? And we're going to bring in a couple experts. I'm going to introduce you now to Doug and Joanne Redunzel. Hi, Joanne. Hi. And hi, Doug. Hello. And, and they have been missionaries for 52 years, and they're still doing it. So th they know all about what's happening in Eastern Europe, Russia, are people coming to Christ or are they not? So this is an important topic, and let's take a moment and pray before we begin. Father, we do pray for people in Russia, Ukraine especially right now, Bulgaria, Romania, the Czech Republic, Slovakia. God, these people that were under darkness and atheism for so many decades, we pray that they will come to Christ and you'd send many missionaries there that would help these people know you. And Lord, we pray if anybody's watching this program and you're wanting them to be a missionary, then tap them on the shoulder and Lord, if there are people watching that never support missions, help them get a zeal and a heart to pray for missionaries and to even give to missionaries. So speak to us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Doug and Joanne, what we like to do is always ask, in a very quick nutshell, we'll start with you, Joanne. How did you become a Christian? I was very interested in spiritual things, but I didn't really know Jesus. I had a roommate who knew Jesus, and she was even involved in evangelism. Mm -hmm. She never shared her faith with me, but I started reading her Bible when she wasn't around. Huh? And through reading the Bible, I realized that I needed Jesus Christ to be not just living in my life, but controlling my life as well. And when I was able to share that with her, then she helped me figure out how to become so that was it. a bigger evangelist. Wonderful. How are you, Doug? How did you come to Christ? Well, I was playing football in college, and uh, one day before football practice, one of the a couple guys from Campus Crusade came. One guy shared their testimony. I'd never heard a Christian testimony before. And then the other guy shared the four laws. And uh, Four spiritual it, laws. Yep. Right it, here. There it is. This little booklet is there. the way Campus Crusade <laughs> has led millions of people to Christ. Yep. Go yep. ahead. And so uh, they. that's when the, I accepted Christ, and a uh, few... Uh, I filled everything out the way they wanted me to, and a few <laughs> days later, I got a phone call, and they said, come on, yeah, I, we're going to teach you some more stuff, and I went to the follow-up meeting, and kind of never looked back. So both of mm -hmm. you became believers in college? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so here's the next question. I'll ask you, Doug, first. How did you know you were supposed to be a missionary? How did that happen? Well, at the end of four years, they had, uh, what Campus Crusade did, they had a, a, a meeting uh, which for, for all the area, people area, in the area, and then they would come and they would explain what's going on in the world and what the needs are, and then they really wanted to know if you would like to participate in that. And I had already kind of made up my mind, I think I'd like to do this for at least for a few years. Okay. I never dreamed it would be 50 years. Okay. But, uh, so then I, I, that's when I decided, I applied and was accepted. Were you married mm -hmm. at that point? 
No, no, no. no okay, no. so how did you know to become a missionary? I, I knew I wanted to share the gospel. And so I did join Campus Crusade for Christ, but then very shortly after that, I, I heard about Eastern Europe and I started praying for Christians who were persecuted. And I always wanted people in prayer groups to pray for them, but nobody ever did except for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lawyer with Campus Crusade said, well, God's probably calling you to go there. And uh, I was pretty shocked because I didn't consider myself that kind of a person. But within a year, I was on my way to working behind the Iron Curtain. There you go. And you, you, you all went to my church way back in the 80s. Yeah. Yes. I thought, I thought something happened in church that told you you're supposed to go to, to Europe. Was that, am I wrong on that? <laughs> well, I was already over there. Okay. I had already been working in Eastern Europe for four years. Okay. And I had I taken some trips over there. Okay. And that's where I met Joanne. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, now here's the big question. Initially, in 1989, when the wall fell, there was lots of Christian activity, a lot of people coming to Christ. Mm -hmm. Is that still going on? What's happening in Eastern Europe? What's happening in Russia? People are still coming to Christ. And um, we're excited about all the, we work specifically with teachers. And so we see a lot of teachers coming to know the Lord and through them, parents and, and other teachers and children, of course. Um, but actually, it's become a very, I mean, I would say young people, teenagers and such, are very secular. There's not as much interest in spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Okay. When people have to pay for their faith, is, there's, a, there's more activity. <laughs> is there still persecution going on in the Eastern countries? As far as in the Eastern Bloc and Eastern Europe, uh, I, I don't think so. In Russia, I think there is some, but it's more it's coming more from the, the political side of things, not so much from the old communists. But there's, there's still quite a few folks that thought that, mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit upset that communism fell apart. And so I think they're, they're, they're being a little, they will the axe a little bit there, so. And then I also remember, Doug, when you guys initially were going to go overseas to be missionaries, your mom got real sick. And you had to decide, you know, the verse where Jesus says, he who, let me go bury my father first. Jesus said, no, uh, who you doesn't put me above father and mother is not worthy of me. What happened with, with that situation? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> we decided to go, to go back overseas. And then during all this time, then my, I, we discovered my mom had Lou Gehrig's disease. And so I remember going to her and say, you know, we can stay back. We don't have to go. But we had a, a, a baby boy and uh, we were all set to go. We had gone through all the training and she said, just go. Maybe by the time you get over there, I can go over there before I become too disabilitated and I can come and just see Europe. I've never done that. So but by the time we left, she was already uh, in a nursing home. And a year later, she passed away. Yeah. And so we had to come back for the funeral. And but you went. We and went, yeah. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so here's, here's another question. With all the uh, European, Eastern European nations, are there certain nations that seem to be more accepting of the gospel than others? I would say you'd be very surprised. Albania, which was completely closed. Oh, it's horrible. Completely closed to Christianity. They claim to be the first totally atheistic country in the world. Yeah. And uh, they are a Muslim nation. One of our strongest movements within the International School Project is in Albania. We see hundreds of teachers coming to the Lord. Yeah, and again, what you do is you go in and you train the teachers to be Christians, yeah. and then they train others. Yeah. All right, That's so Albania. Okay. Now, I've, I've heard <laughs> that um, Prague and the Czech Republic is about the most atheistic place on earth. Is that true? I don't know enough about the rest of the world. All right. But I would say that all of Eastern Europe and Western Europe are very hard grounds. Yeah, to and in Western Europe, I mean, people don't, the, the huge cathedrals are empty in Western right. Europe, uh, but they didn't have the persecution. No. But they still lost the faith. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you worked for a while in Western Germany. Yeah. Did you, did you see people convert there? It was hard work, but hard yes, work. we did see people come okay. to know the Lord. All right, um, and talking about Muslims, I've heard it said that 
Muslims can be the most difficult people to convert to Christ. Mm -hmm. is, is that your experience? They are, they, most people don't realize that they believe in Jesus as a prophet. As a prophet. They just don't believe in him as God. Right, which is, um, which is a big deal. <laughs> but we do see a lot of Muslims around the world coming to the Lord now. And they're having visions, aren't they? They are having visions. Yeah. Yeah. They're having visions of Jesus coming to them. Yeah. and we, we know of a group that was just over right after the attack on Israel. Um, and there were a group of 200 Muslim men and God appeared to all of them. Oh. Jesus appeared to all 200, and they they were astounded. And and, and just to clarify for our Muslim friends, because um, I I share the gospel with them sometimes because they're Uber drivers, and I, mm -hmm. I Christians don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God. We do believe mm -hmm. Jesus is God. We believe Jesus with, is God with the Father and the Spirit. Yeah. But God is only one in our and and Muslims even believe in the virgin birth of Christ. Yeah but they don't believe he died on the cross for our sins. Right. In fact, some of them believe Judas died <laughs> as a substitute. So it's not, it's not Christianity, no. but <laughs> I, I pray for Muslims. So mainly though in Europe, you're taking people from no religion at all to Christ, yeah. am I right? Right. Okay, and so how do you do that? When you are, are going in and talking to these teachers, just give me an example of how would you lead someone to Christ, or to ask it a different mm -hmm. way? Maybe somebody watching this program has, has a friend at work and they've been trying to figure out, how do I even bring it up? What do, what's your advice? Well, I, what we do is we talk to them and ask them questions about their own lives. We ask them about how, you know, not, not yes or no answers. How, how do you, um, what would you say is contentment? What gives contentment in life? What are the things that uh, you would consider, um, what is, what, what's involved in love? Mm -hmm. What is a real loving relationship? Those kinds of questions and- And then they'll share. That they'll share. And, and then, then you say. Then we, <laughs> you know, go on in the conversation. Mm -hmm. The whole point is to lead to the gospel. And I've heard one thing you ask is, can, you know, why do you think the world is so messed up? Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion on that. Right. And then you say, can I tell you what the Bible says? Yeah. The Bible says we're all sinners and we need Christ as our savior. It's always our goal. You worked also with a lot of sports because you're a uh, athletic kind of guy. How, how did that work? What work did um, you do? Well, when I first got involved with Athletes in Action uh, with crew, I, uh, you know, we, we, you're, set, you're put on different campuses and so, <clears throat> because I was an athlete, I could just go in. I, I wrestled with guys. I, you know, played, tried to do with sports with them. But I'd always, you know, I would just simply ask, tell, the, ask the guys. Okay, if, if I met somebody new, I'd say, Hey, I'm with Athletes in Action. Can I come and tell you about my, uh, what we do? And I, we were part of. I, I'd always say we're part of a Christian organization. We have a Christian. A spiritual dimension to what we're doing and okay. so I say I like to talk about that too so okay. I get right up front right away so, so and this is maybe a dumb question but with your experiences overseas now we'll say mm -hmm. does it seem that women are more open to the gospel of Christ than men or is it pretty even well I with the teachers I know a lot more women are teachers just yeah. generally okay. so we have a lot of we there okay. we have a lot of women okay. although in African countries, it seems like more the men are, are dominant in, for, for being teachers. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot more men. Um, I, I, boy, I don't know. I, I would say almost more, uh, maybe more women are probably okay. more interested. But, All right. yeah. but you know, men, you know, guys, guys need to challenge guys. Just, right. just challenge them. Just go and get them. How about this question? Again, maybe it's not the smartest question, but more rich people or poor people seem to come to know the Lord. Do you have any answer on that? Well, I think people who are, don't have as much in the world are more interested in spiritual things. Yeah. People who feel content, they think they've already arrived, they're not as open because they don't think they have a need. That's, that's good. How about, I, I, yeah. I used to meet with the, in the house of the, the fifth richest man in America. You did? Yeah, and we would have meetings, their staff meetings, and he would go down and he would invite all kinds of people. And I was at some of his evangelistic meetings and mm -hmm. it was just fascinating. Wow. There are a lot of wealthy mm -hmm. folks coming to the Lord. Would, would they come to the Lord? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. 
Now, before the camera started rolling, you guys were talking to me about how one thing that is similar between America and Eastern Europe is how students have been taken over by secularism. Mm -hmm. T talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, in previous years, because we've been over there for a very long time, and, and during communism, it wasn't a problem. But now they have access to everything that Western Americans have access to. And so they've got the same desires that are not Christian. They've got the same um, uh, problems with Christianity. They, they're very secular and they just want to be on Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. All over and, the world, it's yeah, the same thing. Is it's not one, an issue for them. It's one big world now. I mean, I and I'm an adult. I have to pray, Lord, help me not be addicted yeah. to watching too many YouTube videos or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, what What about this? Do you experience in in your Eastern Europe and Russia the cults? I mean, are Jehovah's Witnesses over there? Are the Mormons over there? Are are there new age teachers over the, t tell me what, what, is it there? We, when we moved into Russia after communism fell apart, we weren't there three weeks before we were visited by the Jehovah's Witness. Oh my. And they had a huge conference in Moscow that oh summer. Oh my. And just so, for our, visit, are you, our viewers, Jehovah's mm -hmm. Witnesses do not believe in the Trinity. They don't believe Jesus is Lord and God. And it's mm -hmm. kind of a works religion. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. How about Mormons? They're over there too. They're over there too. Mm -hmm. What about, now, for our viewers, there's the Catholic Church, there's the Orthodox Church, and then there's the Protestant churches. The Orthodox Church has always been strong in Russia and Eastern Europe. Yeah. Were they persecuted during the 70 years of communism? Well, in Russia they were. I know there, there, there's, I've seen films of their churches as being totally destroyed, including some just some phenomenal, buildings oh. that were just tor they were just bombed and they or they were turned into places to put you know store food or horse animals things yeah. like that they just desecrated mm -hmm. them i mean now, St stalin killed more people than hitler didn't he I oh think yeah. yeah i think yeah. so yeah yeah <laughs> he, he was the culprit in all of this yeah. Yeah. yeah uh they um some of these buildings are being rebuilt yeah orthodoxy is big in russia it probably always will be um lutheranism was really big in the ukraine prior to the communism, and then they and they a lot of guys a lot of them moved out. So anyway, when we were I, I, at the beginning of the program, I talked about some Lutheran pastors and I going to Russia in 1991. We met with an old Lutheran pastor okay. when he was five years old. His was it his mother or his father went to the post office, never came back. Mom had to tr take those kids. They f flew or fl fled yeah. to Siberia, and they were there for years and years and years. I mean, just there are horror stories. It was terrible, I, but I'm going to tell you something. It's over in, their er in those areas where the Christians were persecuted and put in prison, and then it fell apart. Well, there were still a lot of believers there. There's more evangelism and people coming to the Lord in that part of Russia than any other place, wow. even now. Wow. And the gulags are still going, you know. They're still operating. Are, the gulags, explain yeah. Explain to people what that is. Well, it's kind of like, it's like a prison. Yeah, only they're, they're really massive. And uh, so prisoners are going there. And that's, and they're, so some of those are still open. They're not like they were, of course, during so communist Putin times. So still people, putting people there. Yeah. yeah. Now, Putin, as a prison, as isn't prisons, Putin yeah. a baptized Orthodox? He is. He is, okay. And, and, and the head of the Orthodox Church has come and put holy water on the jets that are going to bomb Ukraine. Oh my. Yeah. And a sad story is when the wall came down and people like you, you're evangelical type Christians, Campus Crusade for Christ, and when you went in, mm -hmm. the Orthodox Church didn't like it overwhelmingly. No, no, no. What happened? People that we led to the Lord who were in the Orthodox Church, they were very punished for, for that, and most of them went back to the Orthodox Church. Or did they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, huh. Well, let, let's, let's uh, bring this up. You both and I are getting kind of old. 
And you've been mission. I've been a pastor for a gazillion years. You've been missionaries for 52 years, but you're still serving the Lord, and so am I. And I just want to encourage our our, our <laughs> listeners. If you're an older person, find something to do to serve the Lord. And I heard a great sermon where this pastor bemoaned the fact that so many Christians retire and move to Florida and all they do is walk the beach and collect seashells. And this pastor said, what are you gonna do on Judgment Day? Hold them up and say, look God, isn't this a lovely seashell collection? <laughs> You're not doing that and I'm not doing that. But um, how long do you think you'll be doing this? I say, as long as I'm on this earth, God has a plan to use me for his glory. Absolutely. And that is what I'm going to do yep. as long as yep. I live, and one way or another. And if there's somebody watching this and you know you can't get out of bed, you're so bedridden or, or mm -hmm. older, then you've got a praying ministry. You can start praying for Doug and Joanne Redunzel <laughs> and Campus Crusade for Christ overseas. You got any thoughts on this, Doug? Um, well, Let's see, uh, you know, tr tr try to stay in shape, you know, <laughs> just right. you know, eat, eat well yep. and eat lots of vegetables, yep. you know, stuff like that. And, <laughs> that, and, and that. Try, to, try to stay healthy. I, as far as, as long as we can st get on a plane and go someplace and as long as we can contribute to the fulfillment of the Great Commission on the international field, we have international skills. And so we feel like we, we still need to invest those. Yeah. And I, I, we feel like we can just almost go any place in the world and get off the plane and we can function. And you know, I just got a letter from somebody in Iowa. I'm a born again Christian, but just life is so awful. I don't seem to have any meaning or purpose. Mm. And, and my point to him, I wrote him back, but every purpose, every Christian who's breathing has a purpose. Yeah. And you gotta, if you're eight or 80 or 90, you gotta find something something to do to serve the Lord, because he put us on this planet for his glory. And so let's ask this question then. Maybe somebody is watching this show and they never even thought of becoming a missionary. Mm -hmm. And maybe somebody else is really chewing on it. How do you determine whether you actually, I mean, we're all missionaries in mm -hmm. one sense, but other than that, <laughs> how do you know if you're supposed to go into this full time? How, how do you figure stuff like that out? How do you hear the voice of the Lord? Well, you start moving. You don't sit there waiting for an invitation. You start moving and looking into what possibilities are there. How can your gifts be used? Checking out different organizations. Yeah, just start moving. Yeah, There's an but old you saying, have to move. It, it's easier to steer a moving car than a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on that, Doc? How well, do you well, know try, if there, well, there's many short-term missions. Try, jump on a short-term mission trip. You, 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 might, you might fail. You go might to not, Haiti you, for two weeks with yeah, your mm -hmm, church. Sure, you know? it, might not, it, it might not work out, or you might, feel, you might just right away say, this is, isn't for me, but at least you've tried. Yeah. You know, just try. You know, and, and try, try, to, try, to, try to do it internationally. Try to go take a, take a flight and get over on another border and just And try. a lot of churches do this. Um, yeah. you know, and, and that's the other thing. A lot of churches have a mission program where they support, like the church that I served for 28 sure. years, you're still getting support from yeah. them. And a, but a lot of churches don't have missionaries. I think that's awful. So I want to encourage you, if you go to a church, and you should, make sure you've got a mission program, you've got some missionaries to support. Sure. Yeah, because God blesses those churches. Yeah. You're not all inwardly yeah. mm -hmm. looking. Um, and speaking of that, are there some missions, like somebody may be watching wondering, you know, I want to give my money to where it doesn't go to some TV preacher's jet, <laughs> but, and I don't have a jet, but they, they just want to make sure their money goes to the salvation of souls overseas. Can you just name a few organizations you would give money to? Um, we are very in support of, I, uh, Obviously, with Campus Crusade for Christ, also known as Crew, but Navigators, I mean, absolutely, they are an amazing organization yep. and have a lot of, of uh, um, a lot of denominations. So, everybody, you you Google Navigators mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, Campus Crusade for Christ, the Jesus Film Project the Bills, is yeah. uh, is one aspect of Campus Crusade. Mm -hmm. They're really bringing people to Christ all over the world. What else? Um, 
Well, I say uh, Young Life is another one, okay. another good group, and they they have international missionaries, and they work. They don't just work with young folks; they have older folks too. But um, this a good that's a good investment with either by going or supporting or. Yep. That's a good one. We I'm, we worked a lot with Slava Gospel Association. Slava we? Gospel Association. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw out a couple names. The Timothy Initiative, mm -hmm. all over the world, bringing lost people to Christ. Yeah. I also like to support something called International Christian Concern. This is a group yeah. that helps persecuted Christians be able to feed their families because wow. dad yeah. is in jail and he can't. Um, and they also have missionary work that's called International Christian Concern. Uh, Samaritan's Purse is good. Oh yeah, good, Samaritan's you know? Purse. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of good, uh, yeah. a lot of good, and, and charitynavigators.org. If you want to check out if this is uh, kosher or not, they grade yeah. Yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. th that's another way to do it. But in fact, let's put your, your uh, you do the, the schools. Yeah. You're, you're getting teachers converted. And I want to, there it is. If, if you want to support and pray for them, isp.org. And there's another good place to, to give your money. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've only got a minute or two left. Would either one of you just pray for our viewers that God will give them a heart for mission, whoever would like to pray? Sure, I'll pray. Lord, thank you for everyone watching this program. I pray that everyone, if, uh, that they would um, want to follow you and they realize following you is an adventure and, and ask them to, to do it. And I pray for everyone. I pray that they'll attempt to do missions, even if it's just helping in the, with the local churches I pray for everyone just if they want to just jump on a plane on a mission trip just to give it a try and Lord I do pray for maybe some here that will support what's going on within the Ukraine I lift up the war that's going on there pray that it will end soon I pray for uh, any anyone that's trying to do anything with missions I just lift them up to you now yes, in Christ's name Jesus name mm -hmm. amen, amen. Well, thank you, Joanne. Yes. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> and just, uh, we appreciate what you're doing. And you know what? It occurs to me, one other good mission to support. That's this TV program. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, just to give an update, we're on the air because of your prayers and your giving. And what happens in our ministry when enough money comes in, we just keep adding stations around the country. Sure. So we're on more stations now than we ever have been and it's because people like the fact that we're preaching scripture and following the word and, and not following the world yeah. <laughs> like some denominations are doing so if you'd like to be part of what we're doing and help support it you can go to pastorstudy.org all of our tv shows are there if you want to watch them for free anytime so pray for missions give to missions and we'll see you next time at the pastor study god bless you Thank you for watching the Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.